Sometimes the sound effects in this game manage to surprise me. You hear this? And let's get started. So welcome back comrade. We are now in episode 19. We are in the middle of the winter. Everything is running good. Let me set up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. We are back into money business and uh, we follow our plan to expand everything. Let's go into pause because I'm planning. We want to expand our industry set up, uh, finish the industry set up, so to speak, and uh, look forward into a bright new future. <laughs> what is nagging me, because I have uh, nearly pre-recorded the whole season. Um, it was one episode after another after another. I have no reloads. If you uh, take a look, I also have no autosave in the games. So this, this is really, really real. <laughs> Uh, so every uh, mistake I make, it, will, it would carry on. I have many great viewers which uh, said some things to me and uh, they're absolutely right. But um, there are always little details you maybe glance over. In the grand thing of scheme of things, I think we did great. Um, but what I didn't recognize and after watching my recordings, I said, oh, Dennis, how could you? It's this one. <laughs> the hospital is absolutely not staffed with cars and um, that's not good. Why is it so? Because I always, after finishing my hospital, I always get the cars in and after that I never look into it. So I, <laughs> I never came to the idea to check. One, two, three, four. Uh, never came to the idea to check even if there are cars in it. And if they are on the way, you also can have a free parking slot. And uh, there's some tatutata -ta -ta from the police. Uh, I think the minions and the Americans call them Wii U, Wii U. <laughs> yeah, so there was something uh, tootling along, but not the, not the uh, hospital. Which is a shame because some people died because of this uh, unnecessary. It's not a big effect, but I think I lost 100 or 200 people in the last two or three years which is not so good the health situation is good but if they get very sick they don't move so they go to the doctor if they're a little bit sick but if they are uh, completely sick they will die so I, let's take a look if we have someone here who's in this category I don't see no one maybe only the hardest ones survive this one uh, endeavor yeah let, pff, let's. I don't know how many people I lose because of this, but uh, it's not a super duper great number because we have hospital care and uh, people go to the hospital, uh, but some people left on the streets, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, yeah. So this is the population curve, and you see there's a slight decrease, but it can also be because we have here invited people and you get a, a first a baby boom and after that a death wave so it's normalizing in these waves um, people live uh, around four years in game so um, every year they get around 20 years older so after three years they start to die which i invited and this is i think which is hurting my population growth otherwise if i would have only invited a big chunk at the beginning to normalize out but we are not in the state um, we have over all uh, 2,000 births. <laughs> 2,000 births. I um, pardon me if I'm also this is my previous. I always rounding numbers because I'm interested in the bigger picture, not in the exact number going to the last digit. So if I read numbers, I always round the numbers because in this game you have to keep many numbers in your head. And if you don't uh, manage this, if you are <laughs> interested in the exact numbers. 
you will never manage to do it. At, at least I can't. So I always round the numbers. These are, if you would perfectly round them, these are 2,100. Uh, I said 2,000, uh, which I do in many numbers because the bigger picture is interesting me. Do I have 70 tons of crops or 80 tons? Not if I have 68 or something. So pardon me if I read constantly numbers wrong. The second thing is if you try to explain something, and also are uh, reading something and also are uh, playing the game and also recording uh, it's a heavy workload try it yourself <laughs> okay uh, 2100 births and around 1600 uh, deaths and <laughs> coming to the subject of numbers in germany we say the numbers in the opposite way which is fantastic especially if you try to do math in your head and uh, speak in English and uh, have the opposite number thingy going on. So, for example, here it's 45 and we say in Germany 450. <laughs> Something like that. So, yeah, it's a fuck up for my little brain. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it really is. <laughs> okay, back to the topic. 2100 birth, uh, 1600 deaths. Uh, we have um, 900 immigrants, you see, and we have uh, nearly double the population. And what is more important, we have also uh, created a good number of academics, 300. We have uh, uh, 1,100 workers. So um, we are developing our population, but we are still in this uh, little hump of uh, death waves. Um, we have 91 escapes. and. Do we get uh, the escapes start? Basically, you can see it here in the graph. Uh, if we introduce the prison, because if you have a prison, uh, the I think the children of the prisoners will escape. If you have a prison and uh, orphanage, the uh, children of the prisoners get into the orphanage. But now they are escaping. So this is why the number 91 is here. These are the imprisoned population, more or less. It's, uh, because uh, you see at the start, we had the hardest times and there were nearly no escapes. But later on, now I have regular escapes and this is the imprisonment. Because the happiness is at an uh, all-time high, I think. It's uh, 70... <laughs> Here we go, 78. No, it's 87. 87%? Um, 88 is the max happiness, which is uh, possible with the setup. Um, yeah, I could buy, there's a vanilla home, which is better even than this one. Um, let's let the time run a little bit. Uh, the vanilla home, there's a one which has even better housing quality. If you want to go on the max max, because the housing quality is 91%. Um, if you want to go on the max max, uh, you should buy the other houses, which are 100 79 people uh, housing so a little bit smaller uh, but also a little bit better housing so the people would be a little bit happier so at the same level of loyalty they would be more productive um, and loyalty is another major pain uh, we have a loyalty of around 70 <laughs> oh god now now it guts me 37 uh, percent this one is 35 um, which is because of the passive loyalty. I explained it several times. Um, yeah, but radio is near and if you will get to the radio when it comes to it. Uh, first, let's go back. Sorry, I'm running a little bit off the rails here. Um, let's go back to the chemical factory. So, where do you hiding little chemical factory? Is it a goal or oh, it's something under engineering or something? Let's see here. Nuclear, no. Engineering, no. Maybe under here. Steel, no. Aluminium, no. Storage, no. Where do you, where were you? Gravel, no. Clothes, no. Wood, no. Ah, it's under oil. Yeah. Oil and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. So we have the plastic factory and the chemical factory. Plastic is a nice subject because mm, you hardly make any uh, profit making plastics. But if you want to uh, support your uh, your own industry, you should go with pl pl uh, plastics. 
But for export, you you can nearly get broke. So let's see, where do we place it? Where do we place it? It's a nice and small footprint. The problem is, uh, chemicals need four types of um, stuff. And um, it only has two or three parking bays. Um, but I have a plan. So... Here's our bus station. Hmm. We need water and we need switch. Water in is here on the other side. Okay. Switch is on the other side, so I rather would like to have it this way. But there's no people entrance on this side. <laughs> so you should go here, maybe. <laughs> oh, I have it here, like this. Or like this. I think like this, here in this. And this row of buildings would be look ni would look nice. So there's a road here hiding in the snow. Or not? I guess. Where does the road end? <laughs> I don't know. Does not go in any way here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Make up your mind! Okay. So. Connect to the mud road so construction can begin. Yeah, thanks, game. We'll make it so, make it a little bit nicer. Hmm. Let's try to make it a little bit nicer. Thank you. Okay. So we need um, crops, which we get on the vicinity. We need gravel, which we will get from the border. We need oil, get from the border, no oil pressure, remember? <laughs> um, and we need wood and uh, logs. And logs, whatever they do to make chemistry happening, um, I want to not import but produce ourselves. Because if I need a tractor to pull out the logs from somewhere, like a trailer tractor combination or something, um, I also can produce the logs at the same time. It would be the it's more or less the same hassle. <laughs> Wood. Yes. Um, lock, f lock farm is really cheap. But... Uh, mm, but it does not fit here. <laughs> okay. I have a little logger here, comrade. Maybe not such a S band, but maybe S band is unavoidable. But if we go S bendy, maybe we can go totally bendy. No, we can't. Okay. Let's do our best. Ah, nice. Okay. So we get a logger logging camp. Uh, and he will uh, destroy our nice hatches. But hey, 
can't have anything. Um, yeah. Let's go for some trees. Which we'll de we destroy in a minute. Okay. Logger. Start the construction here. Okay. Get some people here in. Because they have nothing to do at the moment. Next thing is we could connect here this road and this road to make it look a little bit more coherent, which I like. Let's run the time. And our road crew is idle, which I don't like. So give the comrades something to do. Like this. Yeah. Looks like a pipe. Make it so. Construct. And construction crew, uh, road crew, should be these guys. Let's check it. This is no road crew. <laughs> uh, this is a road crew. And here's the second part of the road crew. Okay, they will take care of it. So I said, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe we make a little experiment um, to have the sewage outflow for the chemical industry here. <laughs> Let's poison our people a little bit to the uh, grand finale. Um, it has a uh, water in, so it needs a sewage out. Yeah, this looks so nice. <laughs> so. Come in handy, this one. Ah, I turned off the peril snapping. Give me some snap to this one, please. Do we have some height problems or other problems. Ah, uh, don't want to go there. Let us take a look. Go here, go there. A little bit excessive, but okay. Do I have con selected the smallest part? Because I think it's only use 20 cubic meters of fresh water, of uh, sewage water. Uh oh. No. Oh. No parallel piping for you. Nice. Okay. So, pipe out. Hmm. Now let's assign them before I forget it. Or underground rubber band? Anybody? Is there no underground? No, there isn't. I think there was an underground rubber band. Okay. 
and the in-pipe. So our trusted industry water system is uh, <laughs> here, my friend. Yes. Um. It's connected like a pro. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay. Approved. Okay. Again. Um. I want my underground rower band, please. Uh, don't like it. Because I'm never completely sure if I hit anything. And if you watch my uh, power line disaster, <laughs> does this farm help for her anyway? Um, you know why. You know why. Okay. Good. So. They are on it? Nice. Mm. Oh, people. No, 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 no. Make me money. Don't go there. Uh, at the ground stage, I don't want to have any people outside. Um, excavators can do the job, not people. And where are my excavators? No one home? Yeah, the cranes. I need to restructure the crane business. Maybe it's still all set up. So uh, we have learned a thing or two. Ah, here we go. Uh, we have learned a thing or two about cranes. <laughs> they don't work as expected. Yeah. Okay. So we have wood. We have um, crops we can deliver from here. Um, we need gravel and oil. So the song would be nice. Also, also, I want to raise up another building here. This one for me. And populate a few people here. So give me... Uh, do I have money for population? Mm, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. High quality Western people. Yeah, make them work. This one is good. Here we are good. Good, good. Okay. It's also good. Take a look at the police. It's good. Kindergarten is good. This one is always full, the other one... Yeah, no, it's okay. It's nice. Okay. But here we are, still making highly educated people. Okay. Our last expansion in the industrial center. Let's double check our work here. Mistakes happen very fast here, you know. Ah, we'll be fine. <laughs> what should go wrong? Um, the harvest season was very rich for us, so we have uh, plenty of crops to sit on, and I don't think we will spend all the crops. Um, yeah. Big surplus. Um, the main thing I, why I started the farming business is because I wanted to reduce the amount of uh, trucks I need to keep my industry running. 
explained it before, but this one eats crops like not tomorrow. So uh, he needs to be fed by 10 tons of, uh, 20 tons of crops a day, uh, where you need, let's say, six cover tolls to make this happen, even if the border is right around the corner. And I don't want to do this. Um, I always try to minimize the amount of um, amount of traffic. So I centralize everything. You see, everything is connected to one one hub, and I have one comrade exporting all my. So one cover toll is making me all the money, money uh, which is exporting the cloth, and um, all the other things are here regionalized, so they need, don't need to be transported all the way. The question was uh, about our cold building, the last one here, for example, and this is at the edge of uh, how we uh, can heat this. They are without a job, they should get your job. Um, this is off the in the edge of uh, heating, so if it's not super cold, let's give me the temperature, not yeah, minus, minus 12, is still okay, but if it gets min minus 18, it's not okay, it's too low. So um, if the temperature, the boiler temperature here in the heating plant is at 90 degrees, you are golden. And then you need to search for the problems uh, in the space you have or in the uh, boiler, uh, how many boilers are here used. So here, for example, I am under using it. I can still attach some buildings to it. It's okay. And the boiler temperature you see is here a little bit lower. The, farther you go away from this one you lose boiler temperature and uh, if you use underground heating uh, you will lose a little bit less boiler temperature this one is 700 meters it's i would say the max for overground and underground you can up go up to 1000 meters and then this one also counts how long the line of um, line of air is here so here it's also at a more or less uh, at a maximum and the boiler temperature here in this one is, you see, um, around this value, uh, let's say 60 degrees. If you look at this one, see, it's a little bit higher. And this is on the verge of being bad. So the, if you activate the temperature overlay, the in-house temperature is what counts. Now let's search for the overlays. Let's give me this and um, this. This one is what's counts. So 24 degrees is optimal and you see here it's 15 degrees and they will moan about their temperature. Um, and the next buildings, the nearer you get to the heating station, the more you get to the 24 degrees optimal temperature. So this is really at the edge of something. If I would have money, I would pull out a, a second pipe here and build a heat exchanger here and would have solved the problem, but we still have no money. <laughs> uh, so we are always running on the edge of uh, having very little money if you follow the season. Um, I hardly managed to pull out my farms, but I managed it anyway. Um, this place was about the optimal start, which uh, also goes on. So um, I have no cuts here. I have no... Um, <laughs> No time lapses or something. You see it back to back recorded, and you see what really is happening. Uh, there's no waiting. Uh, always my construction industry is busy with one project or the other. Um, you always see something happening, and I think this is because uh, the main thing is to balance your money, construction, and your population. So if you have too little money, uh, you cannot construct anything, and your population will suffer. If you have um, too much construction running at the same time, uh, you will finish nothing and you, your construction industry is running around from one building to the other uh, and you get nothing done and you can not make money. If you have no population, you also can make no money because uh, you have no workers. So this is, this is why this uh, series moves on and I'm always busy um, spending a great amount of micromanaging to keep the ball rolling, so to speak, and uh, always doing something. And I'm not bored in any way. I hope you are also not bored, still hanging, hanging out with me here. Why Why is now a rubber band? Is it a red rubber band and I haven't seen it? Maybe. Okay. 
Gut. Ähm. Ja. So we are moving on and I always build the thing which is uh, necessary, not. Um, okay. We have no invitations here. <laughs> um, yeah. So I not. I have. Uh, uh, this is why I staggered the uh, uh, development of the city because at the start you have no chance to build everything at once. It's more money than you have in a bank, and the other rule was no loans and no oil or natural resources. Because I think uh, if you use oil, which is perfectly fine, uh, but it's free money. You simply can pull up a pump jack here. Uh, Get a truck, get it running to the border and a pump jack. You need nothing else. You don't need pipes or pumps and nothing. You can load at the pump jack and get it to the border. It's free money, which is fine, which is uh, so like it should be because oil is free money in nature. But um, I wanted to present here this one with a little bit of a challenge and um, a little bit of technical style. I'm enjoying, for example, Hamuda's run, which uh, goes a totally different world. So he uh, builds out big and builds out relaxed and um, yeah, it's a different style and you can follow the style however you want. But some people said, oh, it's not possible without mods or without loans or without this and that. And uh, I thought, no, not really. It's possible, but you need to really have a bigger concept in mind how you want to do it and uh, be focused. Yeah. This is a big thing. You need to be focused on uh, getting your things done and um, managing, also micromanaging your um, um, your construction sites a little bit. Is my construction industry set up the right way? Ah, looks so. Stuff is coming. Or, yeah, boards are coming. Um, yeah. I give me a time limit of 10 years because I didn't know how fast I can go without loans. Uh, it's. This was the real challenge for me to uh, predict what will come and oh my maybe not so many people um, how many people I have ordered here to go okay at the moment none which is fine mm. yeah Also people here, like I ordered. Ah, gravel. Also gravel. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I hope you are happy how the series turned out. I'm very happy and satisfied. I think clothes are the uh, the most uh, the best start if you want to simply go out uh, earning your first money, which is very very important. You need to have a plan to earn your first money. If you play with loans or without um, on concern on this mode, um, if you simply make, for example, loans and don't earn the money, so don't have a plan how to pay back the loans, uh, you will run into problems if you. Take, for example, a loan of 500k over five years. You need to repay 100k a year, so around 10k a month. And now you need to earn 10k a month. So the loans are pressing. Also, what is pressing is the inflation. Um, at the start of the game, I had a steel price of 370 around this. And we can look at the steel price now, which is also always subject to change. But uh, let's take a look. So we have here steel, 721. <laughs> so we started at a steel price of 370 and now the steel price is uh, doubled. 
this is the power of the inflation in this game. Or maybe because I'm importing all the time steel. Also a possibility. Um, can we get a bit better picture of this one? Um, but it's obnoxious. So nearly double the steel price. Which means if I wouldn't make any money and uh, only rely on my starting money or have no income, the steel price would kill me. Simple as that. Um, all. And give me, give me. Coal, page two. Uranium steel. Okay, <laughs> was higher than this even. Wow. Yeah, but you see the steel price. So if you think, okay, I take my time, I build over five years uh, city, you see what's happening. Every year, the things you can buy for your money are diminishing. Every year, every year, all the vehicles get uh, are more uh, more costly. So the time the time is ticking. Even if you do nothing, time is ticking. This is why also uh, time is a crucial factor in cosmonaut mode. Uh, it's not cosmonaut mode, comrade. It's oh, let's say it's cosmonaut settings <laughs> because the original cosmonaut mode is something different. Um, and I give full credit to the original Cosmonaut developers, but it's not, uh, or the idea of Cosmonaut mod. Um, it's, okay, here it's great, hard. Uh, Cosmonaut are the hardest settings in the game and uh, it's realistic mode, so you cannot buy anything automatically. Uh, and yeah, and the original Cosmonaut mod, for example, I don't play the original Cosmonaut mod because one of the rules is you cannot export any uh, clothes. Yeah, this was a rule of Cosmonaut mod. Another rule of the original Cosmonaut mod is you cannot uh, use any vehicles than the V3S's. Yeah, I use Skodas. So I don't play the original Cosmonaut mod, I play the in-game Cosmonaut settings. <laughs> Which is also, um, interesting enough, called Cosmonaut mod. Yeah, so, um, and there was a little controversial about this and that, and yep, yep. So credit where credit is due, I think the original thinker of the Cosmonaut mod did an interesting job. I never uh, agreed with the rules, because for me it's, uh, if you have tools in the game, you need to use them. If you don't use them, you cripple yourself so much that you only can export gravel or something. You have fun for the next 20 years, but you are not moving fast. And uh, for me, it's also a challenge to measure my output in the speed I develop my country. Yeah. There are other ways uh, how you can restrict yourself and make the game interesting. For example, I had a playthrough where I had to build every vehicle by myself. Uh, I couldn't import any one vehicle. Every vehicle was built by my factory and my workers. Uh, with a modded uh, vehicle factory and smaller one and a smaller train factory and you have fun for 20 years. Uh, you don't run into financial goodness for 20 years because the blueprints are quite expensive. So we are here, for example, 77,000. I think I'm out of the financial troubles for any uh, means. Um, if I'm not doing some major... Uh, Introducing some major pain for myself, I will not have any financial problems, I think. Um, yeah, because the main things are running, so uh, I have enough crops to keep my industry running the whole year. I have an industry which uh, pulls out, makes the main uh, most gain. So, coming from crops, making fabric, uh, from this fabric, making clothes, is a very lucrative business. And also, the beautiful thing is, uh, that's why steel is such a problematic thing. If you are still running, you are fine. But to get steel running, you need a lot of things. So you need the mines, you need the steel mill, you need the infrastructure to transport coal and iron to the mines, and lots of lots of people. So you need around 1000 workers to make it work. And in this process, you need to spend so much money that uh, it's not worth it for a starting industry and also importing the raw resources is not a great idea uh, because you need a lot of vehicles to transport the raw resources or even the railway system <laughs> start your accounting office comrade if you start, uh, build a railway system at the start it will fail because of money 
and speed. Like I said, uh, look at my steel prices. You are lost. So you need to find some industries which are great. I will uh, maybe summarize at the end. I will summarize, make a summary video of, the, of my run and what I've learned. There are some very interesting things I learned. For example, the whole crane thing is uh, came new. The loyalty thing, I have some things to tell, talk about. Uh, some hard numbers of the loyalty and how you can raise them. Looking forward to um, collecting all the numbers. Um, there was one guy, uh, so Swavomir was the crane guy. <laughs> Thank you, Swavomir. Um, told me a very interesting uh, thing about the cranes, which basically mean your cranes are speeding up your people by 5.5 times. So every worker gets up, get a speed boost of 5.5, which is at the construction yard. And um, the speed limit of the crane determines how many workers are sped up. So here's no crane at the moment. Oh, we can buy ourselves. I don't need so many workers. Let's say five. Um, let's keep my fort. <laughs> Total capacity. Mm -mm -mm. Which one would we take? So the spoken yes. I would like this one, but this is mod. Going with the V3S yes, so or the T1. This one looks very, very Soviet. I think I would take it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Where was I with my thoughts? Ah, yeah, the cranes, yeah. So, um, give them fuel. The cranes are an interesting thing. They speed up the people, and the speed level of the crane, uh, other than I thought, maybe, or don't thought, the speed level of the crane determines how many people are supported by the crane. So, if you have one tower crane with a speed limit of 60, it will support 60 people. If you have a crane with a speed limit of 20, so, for example, the cheapest road crane, it will support 20 people. But if you have, anyway, 20 people on the construction site, they are as fast as the tower crane. So, the tower crane with 20 people is not faster, or five tower cranes with 20 people are not faster than one of the cheapest road, road cranes. Which is interesting, which... Uh, if I set up the next in the next round construction offices, I will set them up differently than these these ones because I had many tower cranes. I thought I would get more of them out, but it, it's not the case. Okay. Yeah, but uh, thanking Swarovmir for this information. I made test videos. I make explanation video um, what I have learned, and maybe you could also learn. Um, also, big thanks goes to Frankie Berlin. It's the uh, resident uh, Soviet Republic historian. I'm oh, sorry, I'm hitting the mic. It's the resident uh, Soviet Republic historian, which provides me with hard facts. Because if you play this game over years, things are subject to change. Uh, some things are changing. Not everything is clear what is changing. And he he provided the numbers for the royalty, uh, loyalty, for example. I always pinned his posts because they're very informative and well-researched. Thank you, frankly. Uh, thank you also, Kaya Maya, <laughs> which uh, helped me with the eagled eyes. So uh, I made, for example, one, one thing uh, which I corrected, but... Uh, if you start with a realistic mode, this one is active and I don't know why it's active again. <laughs> I have no idea. It shouldn't be. But yeah, this one is active. And if you... This one I really don't want. If you go to my third or fourth episode, you see how I populate the city. I really don't want this automatic import. So deactivate it here, build your... Uh, build your houses and everything is deactivated. If you activate it here, you maybe forget to... Uh, make it. You only see this one if you are in the uh, ho building house mode. Thank you, Kaya, for this one, and to be so have so eager eyed Overwatch to help me. Yeah. Um, and Ulik with a little housing debate. Uh, he, he he was asking Dennis, why do you build this and this house? And it's okay. It's okay to ask. And because of this, 
I looked again at the houses and uh, what do you know? There's a better house than this one. So not better in building efficiency, but better in uh, living quality. This one. I, next run, if I would do a run like this one, I would prefer this one because higher happiness pays out bigly. If you have higher happiness, it pays out in productivity. If, it, if you have higher productivity, everything in your city goes better. No ifs and buts. Yeah. Low productivity is one of the main reasons of a death spiral. So you can have many reasons why you have low productivity, but if it starts to be low, um, death spiral is running and something is collapsing. Mostly here, the shopping center is collapsing, so it's overfilled. People don't go to do their business and they get unhappy even more. So uh, you have a big problem. Yeah, especially if you have only one little city, uh, you cannot help out with another city. So here it looks nice. We are educating our new arrivals. Are nearly all educated. It's really fast. But the problem is they are also quite crappy. So <laughs> higher criminal statistics goes for them. Lower life expectancy. Loyalty was uh, came up nicely. 36 to 37%. So they get into the <laughs> Soviet everyone is the same uh, mood. Because they bump into uh, Lenin, I think. Where is the Lenin hiding? Here. So Lenin is watching them. So if you watch out from your house, you can see the Lenin and you say, okay, we must be loyal, comrade. Also, they have a little sign here which tells them, okay, Hammer and Sickle is still a thing. And the two Soviet stars, which is my uh, standard setup. I'm sorry, some people maybe heard this time over time but two soviet stars for 10 percent a lenin for every housing block and this little uh monument here which has a limited range but it's also cheap to have a passive gain of 18 percent which results in 37 percent loyalty i also have uh monumented up here the place the working places so they don't forget okay Um, I need to reconnect the farm buildings. Wait, it's high time. The fields, I mean. Is it still connected to farm? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because I changed something. Uh, and uh, thank you to Division for changing this one. I make a... Maybe there's... I don't know. If you block your border and uh, you want to pull out construction materials and have, for example, gravel here somewhere, um, and the border is blocked, you lock up your construction industry. So uh, they started. They said, okay, we make a change. If you block your border and you have, for example, asphalt, they couldn't. Uh, uh, dumpers couldn't get asphalt. They say, okay, we have nothing to do here. Um, they delete the border from the uh, list here of things of sources for material and but they built the road this one was one which is locking up so even they had gravel here they wouldn't build the road because the border was blocked and they get not get no asphalt for another project so they said okay we need to wait yeah there are many 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 small things to in the game to take care and uh, keep in mind it's a quite a complex game so wood is ready what's up with our Ah, it can be built. So let's get the people in. I want to have... Let's say 60 people for one crane. But I think I will get more cranes. Um, what about our underground pipes? Pipey, pipey. This one looks done. Let's hope so. Do we have maybe pressure or not? Output, output. Is pressurized. One is pressurized. Best the third output. Hmm. Interesting. So the, it's only showing connected outputs. I think it's new. Okay. But uh, there's nothing at the other end, so I think that's why they're not showing my pressure. Um. This one also looks done. No. 
Something in the center is missing. Yeah, like always. They sometimes connect these ones, sometimes they don't. Always a subject for big fun. Okay. Yeah. So this is the final stage of our little industrial complex. You can say we are self-reliantly producing sweatshirts at the sweatshops, jobs, sweatshops. Um, quite, <laughs> quite a high. Yeah, nearly full, which is great news. Um, the city is nearly full, so I said uh, 3,000 people population is the max, which results to 2,000 workers. Um, and you can see how the uh, shopping center is filling up. So um, we have over 100 uh, places and 50 to 60 people are always there. And this is critical. If you overfill your shopping center, your town will collapse. My road cranes are somewhere, nowhere to be seen. Maybe they are here. They shouldn't be here. No, I think the flatbeds for the road cranes are uh, doing something different. Road cranes are sitting here idle. The flatbed is running around. Get the road crane, please. Yep. So the road cranes are provided uh, in the second stage if people are on the construction site. If there are no people, they will not provide the road crane. Which is great if you want to uh, control where and when the second stage has begun. This is the second stage. See how fast it goes because all everything is here. Oh. And we go into the fat stage, which needs two truckloads of steel and one truckload of mechanical components. Let's hope the <laughs> truck for the mechanical components is still in use. Or you are not a flatbed. No, you aren't. Mm. You. Ah, you are the export for the western side. Money is not looking good for the western side. <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, but we need some mechanical components. Mm. Go here. But get me a truck. Cover toll. Total capacity. Mod, mod, mod. SKD. SKD. I also need to gravel up the road because if this one is built, I will not have the chance to. Because um, we always need road access here for the goods. Yeah. What is rattling there? Are these ones so loud? Something is here on idle. Ah, maybe it's the tractors buzzing around. Possible. Yeah. Okay. Let's not forget about our job to uh, get some clothes to the west side. Because no sweatshirt, no power.
It's a little bit uh, tedious to not have this one automated, um, but what can you do? Uh, should I? This is why I rather like to have everything from the east side, uh, including the power. But also, uh, we had one or two situations where I really would have to be more conscious or uh, more... Not conscious, but also more... Um, whew, what is the word for it? Mm, not so trigger happy to spend money. Um, because if ruble run out and you get your power from the ruble side, happiness dropping and uh, bespoken death spiral can set in. So because we have western power, we have a very stable source of power. We have some clothes here in store because the store mechanic is crazy. Um, yeah, so you will get a full load. So basically the store mechanic, if you see this, um, our export truck is pulling through the station here to one. You always pull only to one, uh, through one. So if, you, for example, if I would export from here, you would also pull from these two and this storage. But because he's here, he goes only one node further. So he pulls out here. Um, and these are filling, they try to keep the same level as this one filled. But they don't look at the level of cloth there, which uh, the warehouse is filled. They look at the whole level. So they say, okay, it's 60% filled. If we are here in the internal storage over 60%, we will start to push out to the warehouse. And then it gets filled. So this game mechanic is a little bit crazy to understand, but it's also good because I like it. I like to have always a little bit in the internal storage um, to uh, get me flexibility of dealing with, the, for example, uh, the needs of the supermarket here. So I can say, okay, give distribution office, pull out of the internal storage because I know there's always something there because this one is always filled with crops under good situations um, so I have a reliable source for the yeah okay let's pause it so we have water quality of 93% still <laughs> uh, yeah no problem we always have clean water um, so let's hope sewage is also connected does not say or does it say do we have a problem? No resources. Yeah. <laughs> Gravel, crops, oil. What fought? Okay. We have some workers which are working here doing nothing. Mm. But I want to build the street. Okay. So, dollar side recovered. Like I said, I really don't like it. Um, our ruble side is stable, so we are spending more or less the same which comes in. It's always nice to have a cash flow. The bespoken inflation only hits you if you save money. So, <laughs> if you say, okay, I have your saving account and I want to spend money in the next five years, inflation will kill you. But if you have, uh, if you spend all your money and you have incoming money, the inflation also makes my uh, clothes more valuable. Let's see if this is reflected by this one because uh, the prices are a little bit more crazy these days. Mm. Let's stop it. So you see, I have 11,000 rubles uh, 11,500 rubles. I think before it was around 10,000 rubles, but like I said, prices are going up and down, um, especially if you export a good amount. But clothes, for some reasons, are not so, so such a big subject to massive exports. Mm, new plane? Yes. Okay. So this one, mechanization, it will be done in no time. Here's comrade Stalinek arriving. Yep. Crime system is very relaxed. If you can deal with it, you are fine. If you can't deal with it, you have a problem. 
Yeah. But we are here in a good Zeit. So this one is ready to go. I activate uh, some people, 10 people. There will come a train which boosts my people up to 55 work days a day. In one in-game day, they will make 55 work days. It needs 500 work days. So uh, in for 10 people, 55 work days. In 10 days, this one is up. If there's a crane there. Okay. Yeah, here we are also in the green. Nice, nice. Okay. Road crew. And people crew. Yes. So it's a nice little episode. We have introduced the chemical factory. Um, I will produce the first chemicals and then I think we can close it. It's a good time. Hmm. The output of chemicals is great. So we put out more chemicals than we need. Uh, 0 0.8 tons. 8.1 tons. And uh, we need here at the max per day, which we will... Uh, not reach so easy 0 0.5 tons. So the chemical factory produces more than we need, which is a great thing. Um, the chemicals are the last factor on the uh, cost side. I will look into the cost next episode. This episode is uh, really nearly done. Yeah, people, but uh, gravel. Ah, gravel is there. Okay. I still like the mini buses because if you buy them plenty of them, uh, you always have a steady supply of workers. Not that uh, what I will not buy in the future are these tower cranes because uh, the small road cranes are totally enough. Or we can go here uh, crazy and rise it up to 75 people. And this one will be a built in one in the game day. If we have enough workers, which is not guaranteed. <laughs> so take a look 25, 30 workers, 200 work days. Yeah. Okay, we have not so many free workers. 30 workers times 5 was 150 work days a day. And you see what's happening here. But there are more cranes here than are needed. So one crane is totally enough. It will not go faster because of the two cranes. Also because I only can load in 75 people at the working site. Okay. Um, let's invite some Westerners because we have Western money. <laughs> okay, nice. Good. Goody, goody, good. Um, we are here again. People are here again. <laughs> Having no purpose. Um, yeah. So this is our grain office. Uh, I want to have... Oh. Whoa. Stop. Um, I want to have grain here. Let's see. What is the internal storage of grain? Uh, crops. Um, eight tons. <laughs> so let's say at 50% you start to deliver me some crops please um, also yes chemicals you can you can load the chemicals here if they are more than 70 percent and unload them where is the road station yes the road station unload them here nice okay let's hope they can keep up with the crop situation but I think they will Okay, so crops are dealt with. Um, wood is dealt with. There's wood also in storage. Like I said, one station they push on in the wood because they are unloading. Um, so we need gravel and oil. Oil is 20 tons. Um, and you need 1.2 tons of oil a day max production. So I think I can get my oil buddy here. Let's load also oil.
because if I keep it to 50%, he will get a nearly full load in. Let's keep it at 50%. He will keep it a full load in and he has to go here every 10 days. Which maybe I will buy a second oil buddy. Let's see. Uh, next one on the list is gravel. And gravel I will have a static line. Like I said here, the parking spaces are limited. But I can have a static line of a dumper running around getting gravel. Um, the nice thing is if you have a static line, you have the minimum amount of traffic. Because you have the storage in the truck and... Um, the truck is waiting until it's uh, totally unloaded. In the distribution office you always have a trade-off. Are you the new kid? Yeah. You go here and here. So because construction offices are never waiting and always starting if there is some demand, you create more traffic with construction offices. It's very hard to have an optimal traffic situation with construction offices. They are great. I like them. Don't get me wrong. But also, no, their limitations. You get some fuel and get to work. Okay, okay. So... The amount of uh, crops... In this case, uh, cotton is good. Still have 30%, 30 percent, 30 times 800 tons. Again, roughly speaking, so uh, six times 800 tons is, uh, let's say, 4,000 tons. A little bit more, 30 percent. So we still have left a little bit over 1,000 tons, I think. A little bit more than more. You can say 6 times 300 tons is 1,800 tons, yeah. This should uh, get us to the next uh, harvesting stage. But if you have here the first production, I will finish up the episode at high time. Yes, nice. So, we are running on all steam tubes. <laughs> yeah. With this nice view of the uh, steaming future of our town, I will say goodbye comrades and see you next time.